a distribution will have a mean and a distribution will have a standard deviation. A standard deviation gives me a sense of how far away from the means are my values located. Now guys, tell me one standard deviation or one distribution has a standard deviation of 20 units that is distribution A and another distribution called B has a standard deviation of 2000 units okay which distribution do you think will be more dispersed A or B okay B has 2000 units A has 20 units now guys okay another question I'll, I'll get back to that question in a while this is one distribution let me call it distribution 1 and this is a second distribution that I have let me call it distribution 2 which distribution do you think is more dispersed? Distribution 1 or distribution 2? The y-axis is the values, the x-axis is the frequencies. See, that's correct guys, distribution 1 is more dispersed because I see that not so many values are near the mean, values are dispersed away from the mean. Here most of the values are concentrated around the mean and lesser values or very little number of values are very far away from the mean. So 2 is less dispersed or more concentrated distribution 1 is more dispersed or less concentrated now just because the standard deviation is 2000 units I cannot necessarily say that distribution B will be more dispersed because I do not know the absolute scale that I'm talking about distribution A would be the distribution of age in a class so that the standard deviation of 20 units is also very high 20 units means there are either 5 year olds or there are 45 year olds distribution B would be the distribution of millions of barrels of oil production so there are 20 billion barrels of oil produced every year in that context a dispersion of 2 or standard deviation of 2000 units means nothing so dispersion or just an absolute standard deviation number cannot be compared amongst distributions because I don't know what is the mean or what is the absolute scale that I'm talking about so they cannot be compared so to compare the two distributions I will have to compute something called as the coefficient of variation that is divide the standard deviation by the mean so that you get a sense of what the standard deviation is with respect to the scale of the problem the coefficient of variation can be compared amongst different distributions so if one distribution has a higher coefficient of variation we can say it is more dispersed if one distribution has a lower coefficient of variation we can say it is less dispersed let's try to read the question you have just been presented with a report that indicates that the mean monthly return on tables is 0.25% with a standard deviation of 0.36% and the mean monthly return for the S&P 500 is 1.09% with a standard deviation of 7.3% your unit manager has asked you to compute the CV for both these investments and to interpret your results so you are asked to compute the coefficient of variation for both these investments and you are asked to compute the results so for t-bills what is the standard deviation 0.36 so 0.36 is the standard deviation what is the mean it is 0.25 so what will be the coefficient of variation 1.44 coefficient of variation as the formula suggests is the risk per unit of return if I say standard deviation is the risk then it is the risk per unit of return so for every unit of return I have to take 1.44 units of risk 0.25 units of return I take 0.36 so for one unit of return I will take 1.44% of 
or 1.44 times the risk. So the amount of risk per unit of return. This is for T bills. What will it be for S&P 500? The standard deviation is 7.3. The return is 1.09. So in which investment do I have to take higher risk per unit of return? S&P may have given a more absolute return, but I have taken a higher risk also. There I could have lost the money also, or I can lose in the future also. Whereas t bills may have given lower return, but their risk has also been lower. The possibility of big loss is also not there. So for t bills, for every unit of return, I have to take 6.69 units of risk. For uh, that is for S&P. For t bills, uh, for S&P 500, for every unit of return, I have to take 6.69 units of risk. So this is a risk per unit of return. I want this number to be low for investments. So T-bills will have a distribution like 2. This will be for T-bills and S&P will have a distribution. It will be more dispersed. So coefficient of variation can be compared. Standard deviation cannot. Higher the coefficient of variation more dispersed is a distribution. An inverse of the coefficient of variation is called the Sharpe ratio. So Sharpe ratio is defined as the excess return per unit of risk. That is, excess return is defined as the return on the portfolio minus the risk free rate. So the excess return per unit of risk. Would you want this number to be high or low? You want more return per unit of risk or you want less return per unit of risk? You want this number to be high guys. Okay? So let's compute the sharp ratio from the question. It's the same question, similar data. The monthly return on T-bills is 0.25% and the mean monthly return and standard deviation for the S&P 500 are 1.3% and 7.3% respectively. Using T-bill return to represent risk-free rate, compute the Sharpe ratio. Sharpe ratio is the return on the portfolio minus the risk-free rate upon the standard deviation of the portfolio. What is the return on the portfolio equal to? 7.1.3%. What is the excess return? the excess return is equal to 1.3 minus 0.25 so excess return is equal to 1.3 minus 0.25 what is the risk that I have taken to generate this excess return is divided by 0.7 or rather 7.3 so the excess return per unit of risk can be calculated like this for an investment, I want a high Sharpe ratio. That is, I want higher excess return per unit of risk. <sighs> now guys, <coughs> talking about distributions, I will plot a particular data point and please try to plot a distribution for me. Okay? So let's assume the following data set. Let's see how the distribution is going to look. So I have minus 10. as the first value. For the next three values, I have minus 10 as the return. For the next five values, I will have the return as minus 5. For the next eight values, I have the return as 0. Okay? 
the next six values is again five and the last three values are plus ten please plot the distribution please try to plot this distribution so the y axis is the frequency the x axis is the value the values are 0 5 and 10 0 minus 5 and 10 so how will it look for 10 I have a frequency of 3 for 5 I have a frequency of 6 for 0 I have a frequency of 8 for 5 or for minus 5 and the 5 I again have a frequency of 6 for 10 I have a frequency of 3 so you understand how this distribution can be plotted this is how this distribution is going to be plotted a, a distribution is called symmetric if I can draw a line perpendicular to the x-axis or parallel to the y-axis such that it divides my distribution into two halves which are exactly mirror images of each other so is this a symmetric distribution that I have drawn or along the two sides of the mean is it symmetrically distributed are, are there are there mirror images ok pardon my drawing they actually are mirror images so tell me is this distribution a symmetric distribution assume the two triangles are the same ok are the are they are the mirror image are the are the two halves mirror images is this distribution a symmetric distribution again these two halves are mirror images of each other all the distributions that are plotted are symmetric distributions because I can draw a line perpendicular to the x axis which cuts the distribution into two halves which are mirror images of each other that they can be overlapped is this distribution a symmetric distribution guys tell me the last distribution that I have drawn distribution C no because there is no line perpendicular to the y -ax x axis or parallel to the y axis that I can draw that will cut this into equal halves so if a distribution is not symmetric the distribution will be said to be skewed so the distribution that I have plotted or the distribution that I have data set that I have described is that symmetric in nature yes because it is symmetric in nature because it can be divided into two symmetric halves please calculate the mean of this distribution please calculate the mean of this distribution it will be 0 because all the 10's will get cancelled all the 5's will get cancelled I will only be left with 0 so 0 divided by the total number of values will be 0 so what are the total number of values 3 10's 3 into 6 6 5 6 into 12 12 plus 6 18 and 8 26 so total number of values that I have here is 26 so n is equal to 26 in this distribution okay now is this distribution a symmetric distribution yes because there is an equal half what is the mode of this distribution guys mean you proved you just calculated was 0 calculate the mode that is the most frequently occurring value it is also 0 calculate the median median which is the middle value is also equal to zero so guys remember a property of symmetric distributions that the mean is equal to the median is equal to the mode this is a pro property of symmetric distributions okay now tell me that if I add one more value to this distribution I add one more value which is an outlier of 10,000 ok so I add one more value 
on the positive side which is equal to 10,000 so there is one more data point there are now 27 data points the last value is a value equal to 10,000 so how will the plotting of this distribution change there will be one more value very far away at 10,000 which I'll have to extend this distribution to right because there is one more value of 10,000 compute the new mean the earlier values were all the earlier values were all summing up to 0 so it will just be 10,000 divided by 27 that is the total number of values the mean, mean will become something like 400 I don't know 4000 or 400 369 okay so around 370 will be the new mean compute the new median guys what is the new middle value the middle value will still be 0 it will be the average of two zeros so whether you call it this 0 or this 0 the value will still be 0 so the median will still be 0 what will be the mode mode will also be 0 the most frequently occurring value will also be 0 so remember outliers impact the mean the most it, they can impact the median also but normally they will only impact the median or rather the mean so outliers impact the mean the most so the mean will change to 370 the median will remain the same as the mode and the mean will getting pulled to which side on the side of the outlier so the mean is getting pulled to the positive side this will be called a positively skewed distribution so a positively skewed distribution means that the mean is getting pulled on the positive side outliers are existing on the positive side so in a positively skewed distribution remember extend the tail to the positive side okay don't forget this positively skewed means tail will get extended to the positive side so positively skewed distribution will have a mean greater than the median is greater than the mode okay in this case is mean and mode are coming out to be equal but just impact it impacts the mean the most the median the second and the mode the least similarly guys I can easily prove that if the outlier was not on the positive side rather I added a 10,000 on the negative side or there was a minus 10,000 then the mean will become minus 369 or the mean will get pulled towards the negative side so in case of a negatively skewed distribution the mean will be lesser than the median will be lesser than the mode So let's look at this. So in case of positively skewed distribution, the tail will get pulled towards the right side such that the mean will be greater than the median will be greater than the mode. In case of negatively skewed distribution, the mean will get pulled to the right hand side such that the mean will be lesser than the median will be lesser than the mode. So guys, understand skewness of zero means mean is equal to the median is equal to mode it is a symmetric distribution this is a positive skew this means a negative skew okay, there is one more concept called kurtosis I will teach the concept of kurtosis once I teach the normal distribution so in the next chapter on distributions we will study what different distributions are and will understand the con con concept of kurtosis so kurtosis deals with the peakedness of around the mean and the fatness of the tails how peaked is it around the mean and how fat is it on the tails a particular distribution but we need to understand a normal distribution first before we read that concept so we'll study normal distribution first and I'll get back to this concept